Dan Giancola is a Thorold native. He had a stellar athletic career at Dennis Morris High School, and he spent six years kicking in the Canadian Football League. Getting up out of a bed one day after your stroke. If you feel it in your heart you want to do it and you still think you got it, go do it. And uh, I feel I got it. Was having this stroke the best or worst thing that ever happened to you? No, no. Right now, in this moment, the best. I love to train. I train three hours a day, five days a week. I take the weekends off to be with the family. When do you stop? Like, is this a sign for something? Now, some people have made the, uh, the comparison of uh, him being Rocky Balboy. What have you done with your life between that day and that day? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Meeting Gold Show. We want to thank you for joining us today. Um, we had to get this gentleman in immediately. <laughs> immediately. We've had him on before, <laughs> but, um, you know, Dan, it's, it's a pleasure to, to get you back in and, uh, and just talk about recently what happened and more so the new realizations you've come to because I just was talking to another gentleman the other day and um, he had a major heart surgery. He wasn't supposed to make it out. Mm. And he made it out, and his faith grew tremendously. But on top of that, it's crazy to me how even at the lowest point in your life, you can gain so much appreciation in such a positive way. You know, man, you can go. That's such a big, you know, what you just said. I mean, when you uh, when you face uh, death. I mean, this is probably the best way to start. When you face death, it changes your, um, your outlook on everything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, two and a half years ago, I had my heart attack, and uh, it was the Widowmaker, and um, they said I should not have survived that one. I should have dropped dead right there. I mean, I had 100% blockage of my main artery. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I survived that. I was able to drive myself to the hospital, not even realizing the severity of it. And then two weeks ago today, literally today, um, I have a massive stroke. Um, you don't really need to know the numbers at all, but I had a 17. 17, from what I know, 17 to 25 is uh, a severe stroke. So it's out of 25 is how they measure it? And then you go to the next one. Like then you go like 25, I think it was. And I could be completely wrong, but it was like 25 to 45. And okay. inside that, um, you know, you're, it's, it's, really, it's, it's really bad. Again, I, I wouldn't be doing it uh, justice, really. Just explaining the numbers, yeah. yeah. Um, but once again, something that I should not have survived. And... Um, not only did I survive, within four days, um, they released me. And I, uh, I mean, I can go through the whole account if you'd like, like what happened, you know. Describe I, I, to me the pain that you felt. Not just physically. Wow. The pain, the stroke itself, there's no pain. There's no pain. We're just sitting here like this, and all of a sudden your body just shuts down. And that was me at my studio by myself. Um, the same place you had the heart attack? Yeah. The only difference is I was sitting in my office. I was sitting on my couch, and uh, one of my buddies was coming over. And uh, he came on over, and he walked in the room, and at that point I was already having my stroke. And uh, I couldn't talk. My right arm was turned in. My uh, my right leg turned in. I was falling out of my chair, and I kept pushing myself up with my hand, trying to push myself back in my chair. And he, his face was right here, and he just said to me, he said, uh, Dan, Dan, he says, are you okay? And I couldn't respond. And I think that's probably the worst feeling. It's that. It's that feeling of not being able to respond to you. I hear you, I see you, you're talking to me right now, but I can't say anything to you. 
And at that point, you know, I guess my, my mouth started slurring over to the right. And it was almost, I guess it's evident that I was having a stroke. Mm-hmm. And um, he called 911, 911 came. And uh, I don't remember the paramedics at all. They put me in an ambulance. Uh, they brought me to Niagara Falls. They did a CAT scan. Still no idea. I was out. I don't remember nothing. I don't recall anything. So they knew immediately you were having a stroke. Oh yeah, they knew right away. They shot me up with a special blood thinner. And um, that, uh, that saved my life. Because what it does is it um, breaks down the clot. But they didn't know if it was gonna work. So they put me in an ambulance from Niagara Falls and raced me to Hamilton to meet the surgeon. They were doing another, going to do another CAT scan and they were going to do surgery. They were going to suck out the, the clock. Sorry, the clot. This is where, you know, my words. So you'll, you're still throughout this, you're going to see it. I'm still having the effects of, of um, residue, of so to say. And um, I got there. They put me in a CAT scan and uh, miraculously, my arms started moving. Then my legs started moving. And then I looked at the doctors and I started talking to the doctors and I'm like, what the hell? And literally just, like, literally everything just started working. They put me in the CAT scan and I guess when they took me out, the doctor looked at my wife and my daughter and said, uh, we've had a miracle. He's a two. Uh, again, and it's not, our, it's not our world. We don't know, yeah. right? It, we, we don't speak that, that, you know, that language. It's just like levels of it, it, severity. Yeah. So what they said was, was pretty much the clot is dissipated. It's literally nothing there. We have no reason to go in there to do any form of surgery whatsoever. We're gonna send him back to, to Niagara Falls. We're gonna put him in the ICU. We're gonna take another CAT scan in 24 hours and we'll follow it up with an MRI. And I was like, all right, you know, whatever, whatever. So I go back, I'm in the ICU and, uh, oof, that one was a tough one. Getting back there and, and you're in the ICU and they're, they're waking you up every hour, every hour. Really? Lights in your eyes, asking to balance your hands, you know, hand to, um, finger to, from nose to, to his, you know, his finger back and forth. So you're not sleeping? Oh, no, man. I mean, they, they, the first thing they say is we need you to rest, we need you to sleep, but the second you go out, you're up. You know what I mean? Because somebody's, somebody's, you know, sticking you with needles or, you know, they're taking blood or they're, you know, whatever they're doing, right? And the key to, you know, they need to know, right? Like, are you still responding, you know? 24 hours later, they did, uh, they did um, the CAT scan follow-up. And they said, Mr. Giancola, you've had a miracle, man. We're showing little to nothing right now. We're showing and now another little mark on the other side, on the right. And we're like, oh no, we're gonna have to do an MRI. So they put me one, uh, I don't know what they call it, but one stage down from ICU. So you go to a lower now. Okay. The second I went in there, I looked at the nurse and I said, okay, how long before I can get on my feet? She says, oh, you know, you gotta be really careful. You've been in the bed now for basically two days. You're on a ton of blood thinners you know, and you just had a major stroke, you're not really able to walk. And uh, I said, I, I have to. I told him straight up, I have to. And uh, he says, you know, it's, it's really risky because if you fall and you, you know, I said, I understand that, but if I stay in this bed, I'm gonna die. Mentally, I'm going to die. So um, it was about two hours later, doctor came in, doctor gave me, you know, this is where your recovery is going to be at. This is where you're at. It's remarkable what you're doing right now. Keep it up. I said, can I walk? And he says, I know you've asked two people this now. And I says, yeah, I, I want to walk. So he said, okay, on your time, let us know. So I rang the button three or four times and God bless them. They're so busy and they are the best. I have to say this right now, if I can. Mm-hmm. Hospitals. Doctors, nurses take a, a beating, especially these days, because you know, they're not there when you need them or they don't this, whatever the situation is. I got to tell you, 
I dealt with five doctors, nothing but class. They treated me like gold. Nurses who held my hand. That held my hand in the middle of the night, talking to me and telling me that I'm going to be okay. Not like for five minutes. We're talking, man, sit there with me for an hour. They just don't get enough credit. And uh, it meant a lot to me, the way, they, the way I got treated in there and the way I saw everybody get treated in there. So I have to actually plug that in there because they take a lot of slack. Of course, yeah. And um, they did really good by me. So from there, they said, we're going to put you in for an MRI now. They put me in an MRI, and by that time, I've already been up on my feet, walking and moving. I went for my MRI, and uh, we'll give you the results the next day. And I said, you know, they're saying that I'm having a full recovery. They said I didn't need anything, for, you know, nothing for rehab. And I thought, if I don't try to release rehab myself right now and see what I'm capable of doing, this is the place to do it. I have to do it here, and I got to do it now. So that's when I made the decision in the videos that I put up on Instagram that you saw, and you, I'll, I'll send to you. That was me doing my own thing. I just every day got up, and I would, every hour I made a promise to myself, every hour I was going to get up and go walk that hall, no matter how tired I was. I was going to get up, and I was going to walk that hall. Dan, can I jump in here? I want to ask yeah, you. Yeah, bro, anytime. What kept you, I want to take it back, okay? We'll, we'll revisit um, that moment for you. Um, you have so much to your life story, um, your past, playing football and that kind of thing, which we covered in our last interview. Um, but as a child, I think a lot stems from somebody as a child um, and who they become. Yeah. I think there's a lot of things that happen throughout your life as you get older and in your adult life that, that transform, but I think the foundations are built as a child. Yeah. What, as a child, were you around? What people were you around? What feelings, what attitude, what mindset were you around that you surrounded yourself with as a child to have this attitude of continuous persistence? Ooh. My mom and my dad. My mom and my dad. You know, um, you know, my dad was always, uh, you know, old school Italian. Came to this, this, this country with nothing, absolutely nothing. And um, my mom, you know, same thing, right? They didn't have nothing. They had nothing. You know, my, my mom was a housewife and took care of three boys. My dad worked at General Motors, three boys, you know, and, you know, the old cliche, you know, back in the day, you know, you don't, you're not an entrepreneur or anything like that. You play it safe. You go to work, you make, you know, make a check, put food on your table, you know, on the table and clothes on your back and roof over your head. And that's what it was about. And my grandmother, there, my, 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 my dad's uh, mom, same thing, you know, come from the old country and brought, you know, two, two kids and left one in, in Italy, you know, and came here with nothing, nothing, you know. And um, they inspire me so much. And, they, and, and my dad passed away a couple years ago, and even in death, and I was there for it with my one, my one brother. And, um, you know, two days from passing, he was uh, in, in the bed. And he um, would constantly be wanting to sit up because his back was killing me. He was like, because he had those, what do they call the bed, bed burns? Mm -hmm. Yeah. From yeah. being in the bed. Yeah. And he'd want to sit up. And I'd be like, Pa, he said, I got you. You know, I try to get around. No, 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 no. Walk around the end of the bed. Let me do it. And he'd, you know, pull himself up. It was like two days before he died. Strong people, strong people. And I drew from that. That's where I get my strength. I get my strength from my parents, and my, my, grand, my, my grand, great grandparents. Um, yeah. What, um, 
what emotion did you crave as a child? Meaning? Feeling. Um, you know, for me, I think a lot of, a lot of myself as a child, I, I, I craved, um, you know, being afraid of making mistakes and making people proud. Wow. Maybe something that lacked, that you couldn't find in your childhood. Proud. When I played professional football, I never played for me. It sounds crazy. That it sounds completely crazy. I never played the game for me. I mean, I did to a certain extent. Like, I chased my goal, lived out my dream. But that last name on the jersey and my parents proud and my brothers were proud and my cousins and my family and my friends and I did everything I could to share that. You know, I, if, if, if I knew you then and we were doing this, I'd give you tickets and said, hey, you know, afterwards you're not just coming to the game. I want you to come downstairs and, and get that feeling what it's like to be down in the field. And that's, those are the things I did that I love to do. And uh, so, I mean, the feeling of pride, also overcoming fear. Younger, I lived and hesitated doing a lot of things out of fear. Public speaking, I took zero. Anytime, I, if, this, if this was something when I was younger, this wasn't happening. I remember you saying that. It's not yeah. happening. Yeah, man. you hated it. I hated it. I got bullied when I was in grade four and by a teacher. And, uh, and you know, and unfortunately, you know, you're, you're, you're young and, you know, we're all kids and kids are laughing at you, pointing at you, telling you you're stupid. And, um, yeah, that really, that really, that hit me hard. That hit me really hard. Do you think you're making your father, your parents proud by coming out of this? I, I, I hope so, and yeah, I mean, I know, I know they are. You know, I know my dad's looking down on me and, you know, and, you know, I, I know he is, I, I know he is. I know my grandparents who have all passed, I, I know they are, and I know my brothers are, my mom is, you know. Um, I'm trying to, there's a, there's a, there's a part where I'm not just thinking about just me. There's also a part about me doing this for everybody who goes through this. I almost died twice. And um, I don't know, you know, they say Everything in life happens for a reason. It's tried to, it's really hard to find um, that why. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And um, when you're going through it, you gotta fight. I'm fighting, man. You don't know how hard it is to be here today. This was huge for me, huge to be here with you today. You um, resembled your why back when you wanted to play pro football. You have your stories there. Um, real quick, you, you, know, were, uh, you were not accepted by many teams. You, know, you were given and then stripped away from chances multiple times. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, you were crazy enough to just keep going. Yeah. And it worked out. And now it seems you're being challenged with another new why. Yeah once again, and almost as harder than playing pro football. Now it's fighting for your life and for your family. This is a completely different animal, man. It's, they're two different, you know, chasing your dream. You know, it's a want. I guess you could say it's, you know, parts, you know, and, and parts a need, but it's a want. You know, you, you want to play that game. You want to live your dream. And, Living is not a want. Living is a need. And um, yeah, the nice part is I had the blueprint, right? I know what it took to do what I did playing football. 
it's a little different. It's a little different, but. Dan, you have been around um, recently death a lot um, and, and almost flashes of it. Are you afraid of it? Not anymore. Why? I made uh, my first, my heart attack. I made peace with God right here on this street. I was driving and I was literally underneath my car in so much pain. And uh, even though I, I knew I was gonna survive, there was something that I felt that I was gonna survive. I remember saying to God, if this is it, uh, this, this is verbatim. I said, uh, if this is it, God, I've had a great life. Thank you so much. Just uh, take care of my wife and my daughter. We're all, um, I heard this quote, somebody said, the second that we're born, we're dying. I mean, it's true. Right? Is that a positive or negative outlook, or is it both? Oh, no, it's definitely positive, man. I mean, you know, you, you got to live in both, in both instances for me. Sam, honestly, man, it, I woke up like I did, like right now. Regular, regular day. The first one, all of a sudden, I got pain. Like, oh my God, oh my God, like what the hell's going on? Boom, I have an heart attack. Next one, I'm sitting on the couch, eight o'clock at night, just finished cleaning my studio, and I'm having a stroke. So Dan, I'm gonna make you think about this one. Um, when do you stop, if you do? Like, is this a sign for something? Like, what do you think about it? Oh, stopping? Stopping meaning what? Like cutting back things or? Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. No, no. If anything, I'm going to amp up. I don't, no. I don't do that. Why? What, what in your past makes you want to go, go more, do more? It's just my DNA. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not playing hero. Anybody who knows me knows me. I'm not saying things to blow smoke. I have to allow my body to heal right now. That's inevitable. I have to let my body, so some things got to slow down right now. I haven't done any classes in two weeks, obviously. Hoping to have two one maybe tomorrow, one. Um, oh man, life's short, life's short. I'm not, I mean, my, my life is not, everybody, you know, I, I, do I do a lot? Yes, I do a ton of stuff for, for fundraising, you know, events and, sick kids and, and my fundraisers, I, yeah, I do that. I'm not bench pressing a thousand pounds. I got my meetings, I'm going here, I'm going there. I'm putting smile on people's faces. Man, my life's done tomorrow. I feel good. So you would say that you've lived a full life? Oh, hell yeah. How can somebody live a full life? Wow, that's a good question. How can somebody, you know, man, just doing what you love to do. I told you that when I met you. I, I never went to work playing professional football. I went to play football. My studio that I have, I go there and I play. It's all fun. I love my life. I love what I do. Now motivational speaking is coming from this. So to get back what we said before, you find that, what's that, per what's the reason? Why did it happen? It's for me to educate people and say that this could happen to you. Now I'm speaking, you know, motivational speaking for Heart and Stroke. I'm doing my next fundraiser for uh, Give the Boot to Cardiovascular Disease. We're raising money for the hospital. Everything happens for a reason, Sam, you know, and I'm not my jib, you know, woo guy right now. I want to be so bad. And I'm, I'm reserved right now because I'm scared. Mm. It won't last long, man. Somebody said to me yesterday, 
If I didn't, if you don't, if I didn't die of the stroke or die of a heart attack, what's to say a drunk driver doesn't hit me by an accident and kills me? Am I supposed to live in the box? Am I supposed to say, oh, well, I've had a stroke and a heart attack now. Don't breathe, don't move, bubble me. Come on, man, that's not life. So Dan, um, I'm gonna be, I'm trying to play in the middle here because there's a very opinionated topic that I wanna ask. Yeah, sure. Um, is, it's, unfor the, here's a saying, and I'm gonna just dissect your thoughts on it. Yeah. Um, when somebody says, you know, it's unfortunate that human beings need such harsh things to happen in order for their appreciation for life to grow. Yeah. Do you think that's a positive or a negative thing? A totally positive. You do? Totally positive. W why? Okay. Why can't, let me just challenge you here. Yeah, why, yeah. why can't we just appreciate what we have already before we have to go through something because like that? Because somebody needs that kick in the ass. Some people need that kick. I need, I need I'm, I'm speaking strictly for me now. I'm not speaking for anybody in this room or anybody. I'm speaking strictly for me. I need the kick in the ass because I can fall into that status quo. That, here's an example to you, okay? I was working at Premier Fitness as a personal trainer. And by the end, when I was there, we weren't getting paid. They were in bankruptcy. We weren't getting paid. We're working every day. I'm working 12-hour days. No, no promising the checks are coming. I drive up to, uh, I don't know where it was in Toronto, Dundas, something like whatever, to go to the main office to pick up my check, and the checks aren't there, and I got to pay my bills. And I knew other places were hiring, but I was content. You were happy. I was happy because I was working a lot, I wasn't making my checks, but I'm like, oh, the money's gonna come, money's gonna come. But I wanted to start my own business. I gave my, uh, I, I remember going in there, uh, I don't remember what it was, it was like a two weeks, I told myself, I'm possibly gonna, possibly gonna give you guys a two weeks notice, I just wanna give you a heads up, but I possibly could be giving you a two weeks notice. And they said to me, oh, okay, the next day, I go back in the back room, look for my book. I was training, and you got like a, um, what do you call it there? Because I'm having a brain fart because I'm uh, a I stroke. Like a, a fitness book? Like a journal, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got their names, this, that, everything else. So I go back, my book's gone. I walk to the front, and I'm like, hey, who's playing the game? He says, I got somebody, they got to sign out for their session. No, you need to come in here right now. You're soliciting. Well, what am I soliciting? You're soliciting, we know you're soliciting, we have word to your, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I, I just gave you a possible, we need you, get your stuff here. They escort me to my, my, uh, my locker, grab all my stuff, and then hands me a lawyer, which was bogus. I've been, I went against their rules, ba 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 ba. Anyway, long story short, I went and left. If that didn't happen like that, and in, in a violent way that way, dude, I might not have left. I might have just stayed and just accepted what it was. I, maybe I, I, I wouldn't have my own studio. I learned all the things not to do, not what to do. I learned what not to do. So I'm hoping that that answers your question. It For does, me, it does. Like, it, for some people, you need that kick in the ass. It's like somebody telling you that it's not going to work isn't enough. You have to know that it's not. You have to experience it not working. Can I reverse it to you for a second? Yeah, go for it. You were in your, your parents' basement. Mm -hmm. Did you have the oomph to say, I, I, I gotta do this, I need more. I, I, gotta, I gotta move on, I gotta, I gotta need my own place. Or did you, did you need a swift boot? Uh, you make a good point. Um, I think I always had that sense where I wanted more. Right. Um, but I, I did. I needed, like, a, a, you, I feel like I needed something. Right. Something, like a, a push. Right. To make that subconscious thought right. become a reality. 
And I think that that answers yours. See, so you were in a less, uh, I don't want to say violent way. No, but, you I, know, I, you know I, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I didn't Where have Where mine was like, mine was like, you know, hey. Yeah, get out of here. Like, get out of here. You know what I mean? And I'm like, wow, like, I didn't do anything wrong. I've given you my year and a half. I've gone over and beyond. I work six days a week, 12 hour days for you. You haven't paid me in two months and I'm still here. But I needed that. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully that kind of answers, you know, to what you're saying. Um, Dan, I just thought of a, a question that I wanted to ask you. <clears throat> and I asked a gentleman who won the lottery last year. I said, was it the best or worst thing that ever happened to you? Was having this stroke the best or worst thing that ever happened to you? Right now? In this moment? The best. The best. Does that make you think about why? No, I already know why. I already know why. Um, I don't know the exact quote because my brain is not allowing me to, to get it right now. But God doesn't give uh, something along the lines of God doesn't give anything that you can't handle. handle. Yeah. I know what quote you're re referencing to, yeah. And... Um, I know, I know in my heart. I know that there's a reason for this. I'm gonna be writing, a, I'm writing a book. I know this is leading to speaking now for Heart and Stroke, you know, especially when you carry a, now you know me, I hate the word celebrity. I can't stand it. Yeah. I don't believe in it, that's just me. Um, I don't, You've always been that way. I, yeah, I, I just don't believe in it. I believe that I had, I was very, blessed to have a, a job behind a camera and an opportunity to entertain people. But it didn't make me anything better than anybody else. And I think we get lost in that. But if I have that platform as a celebrity and to share my experiences and talk to people, and, then that's what I'm gonna do. Is that your new purpose? A, a new drive that's now coming? I, I you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I take it on. I, I love to do it. Love to do it. I mean, are you kidding me? To go, the opportunity to go out and speak and, and to, uh, you know, not only to be a, a motivational speaker, but also to, to do, you know, something like this, you know, to enlighten people and help people in that way. You know, absolutely, man. I totally take it on. I, 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 who knows, man? I mean, I, I got so many things going on right now, it's not even funny. I got my studio, motivational speaker, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get this book done. Um, and in all of, you know, and I can keep going, and in all of that, I, that all has got to stop for half a second, and I just got to get me better. Because without your health, and, and you know, I'm living proof of this, man, you know. It, without your health, man, you got nothing. You know, you have a stroke or whatever your situation is. You're not coming here. You're not doing this today. You're in bed. I'm very blessed, man. There were 65 people in my ward, the stroke uh, unit, 65. And I was the only one walking. Makes you think, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. So, Dan, you said something, um, you want to amp up what you're doing, and I really respect that. I do admire that. What do your, fa what do your family, friends think about that? Oh, I mean, you know, they all know me. Yeah. But they do know that I'm extremely intelligent when it comes to this stuff. You know, if I'm going to tell you to stay home and rest and do all the things you're supposed to do to the doctor, what the doctor says to you, then I'm no better than that, right? So if I say to you, you need to stay home, you need to rest and do everything they're saying right now and taking your fluids, get up and walk every day, you're not allowed to lift any weights right now, I'm no better than you. So I gotta do the exact same thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. So when I say just, you know, I just wanna make sure I clarify it. When I say, you know, I'm gonna pick it up, all I mean is I'm going to go back to what I was doing before. 
Well, you're always. That's all I, I mean. know you. You're, you're you always know. doing more and, and, but more for the community. My goal, you know what's crazy? This, you want to know my, this is my, this is how messed up I am. <laughs> my thought two days after when they took me out of the ICU was, I got to hurry up, man. Like it's September 17th. My wife goes, what the hell's 17th? I got two walks I got to do. She goes, what are you talking about? I says, well, I'm doing the food literacy. They're doing their big walk at A. Meyer School. But I have to do that because I'm the ambassador for that. And then literally, that's from 9 to 12. And then I got to get in the car and I got to race to Heater's Heroes because I got to go walk Caitlin, the little girl, if you've ever seen a little yeah, girl. I, did, I, did. I got to walk her over there because it's the celebrity walk with a child. That was my mojo, man. I'm like, I, I got it. So that's what was driving me in the hospital was I got to walk this girl. That's my goal. I got to walk this girl September 17th. So to be up in four days and be like, whoa, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. Let's go. Like, that was pretty cool. You know, that was my goal. I was shooting for September 17th. And, you know, I'm nowhere near it, but I, I'm almost there. You know, I find the interesting thing about human beings is there's always something coming because we're, we're living in a world that we've never not known without time. Time is so hard for us to understand if we'd never had it. But knowing that you're going to die, you have five minutes left in your bed with everybody around you, what thoughts, and I'm, I'm talking knowing that your time is up. Okay. There is nothing coming, okay. nothing. Okay. What are you thinking? Well, I've been there <laughs> a couple times now. So, um, you know, uh, what are you thinking? I, well, one comes down to your religious belief. Like I said, I, I had made peace with God. I, I really did. I remember that one. The other one, I'm, Lord knows what I was thinking as I was out. But I, I just, I made peace with God. I just said, you know, God, I've done everything that I possibly could in my life and I've had a beautiful life. I remember saying this, man. I've had a beautiful life. Thank you. You know, my thought was take care of my wife and my daughter. You know, I'm going to say this because I live by this. On your tombstone, you have your name, right? And what else is on that tombstone? Something you want somebody to see, uh, a quote. Uh... Okay, well, but what else? Something that would be on everybody, no matter who you date. are. It's a date. So there's the beginning, right? And then there's that end, end date, okay? So Dan was born in 1970, and we sure to hell ain't gonna put it, I'm not saying nothing about no year, on it, but, but there's an end year. There's that dash in the middle. And that dash in the middle is the most important thing. Because that defines between this time and this time what you've done with your life. That dash in the middle is the most important thing on that stone. And that's the way I look at life. So when I tell people, I've always said this, and people think, you know, I thought it was nuts, but now it makes a lot more sense. They always say, what drives you? I said, the cemetery. Like, what? What the hell can, you know, people who've passed away, tombstones, what the hell could that, how can that possibly motivate you? Because I know that's where I'm going to be. That's it. That's the last ride. I could have been there twice now. That's the last ride, man. So, man, do something with your life. It doesn't matter what you want. You want to jump out of a plane, jump out of a plane. You want to do a podcast, a podcast and be the best, see? Yeah. And be the best, then go get it. The only thing stopping you is you. But that, for me, Sam, that dash in the middle, on that stone, on anybody's stone, when I see that dash, it makes me think, 
What have you done with your life between that date and that date? I want to leave a legacy. That's what I want. If there could be one thing that you could be known for, what would it be? Loving people, man. Helping people. I can't, I can't even sum that up. I, I want to be that guy who was there, there for you, that loves you unconditionally, that wants to motivate you to be the best that you can be. Look at the jobs I've had. I mean, football, all I wanted was to inspire people to chase their dreams and to live their best life and go chase your dreams and live it. I did. Live in proof. Grocery clerk, turn pro. Anybody can do it. Then I'm a personal trainer. All I want to do is make people's lives healthier, live longer. Motivational speaking. I just want to motivate you to be better and be better than what you are or what you could possibly be. That's what I want to be remembered at. That's me. I think a lot of things in life, you're defined by the challenges you face. Yeah. But let's take it back to, we've talked about your adult life. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest challenge you grew up with in your childhood? Oh man, confidence. And constantly living in fear and finding excuses why not to do something. Why did you lack confidence? I don't know. I think because I was bullied so much. I was bullied on how I looked, that uh, I was stupid. And I wasn't stupid. I was, a, I was a dreamer. If you're talking about a topic that I love, I'm right here, I'm with you. Like I am with you right now, right? I'm totally engaged with you. If we're talking about basket weaving 101, I'm talking to you but I'm not absorbing anything you're saying to me. So I was seen as a dumb kid. Interesting, so everybody looked at you like he was talking about that basket weaving example. Yeah, hmm. yeah. You so know. did you feel unwanted? Um, not worthy, not worthy. You know, I'd be with my, my, my friends and especially, you know, growing up and then going from grade school to, to high school and you know, I remember I went to a different school and because I was such a jock, people just automatically assumed I was this Einstein. So we went up, a perfect example. I got called to go up to the board, and do a, some division. Yeah. So I went up and they called up another guy and they're like, oh, Jacola's gonna destroy you. He's gonna destroy you. And I'm horrible in math. I mean, I'm good in math, but I'm, you know, and, uh, we go up to the board, and uh, Marcello, I'll never forget his, Marcello, he gets up there, pop, 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 and I don't think I wrote down more than two numbers. He was already done. And everybody just sitting there like, what the hell? I was like, you know, so I go sit down, and people were judging me right from the get-go. Oh, he's a stupid jock, you know, and... Next thing you know, like in, in my day, there was basic, general, advanced, enriched. Uh, I don't think that exists anymore. Not at all. <laughs> right? So I was all general. You're an old soul, Dan. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was all in general. My other friends were in advanced, enriched, guys who I hung around with. And my saving grace in high school was I was a jock. So in grade nine, I played senior football, won five, five championships, nine through grade through third. 13. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Um, soccer, yeah, same thing. At Dennis Morris, right? Yeah, the same thing with soccer. I played senior football, grade nine through, uh, sorry, soccer and football both, mm -hmm. right through. And so that was my saving grace. Otherwise, holy Lord Almighty, who knows? Who knows? But, uh, you know, that was my popularity. It was my, you know, being a jock. Right. You know, and... Um, Otherwise, I would have probably been classified as a, I don't know what I would have been classified as, a stupid guy, you know? So what, is, what <laughs> does somebody do to build their confidence? What, like, because like, I think so many people lack self-confidence nowadays and, and moments of 
lacking that self-confidence. What can somebody do to build that? <laughs> Dude, that is such a huge... Social media is the worst. I agree. I mean, and I would be a hypocrite because... Well, we both use it, uh, right? Come on. I mean, that's the way the world is, right? I mean, we use it now for our business. You know, I should have the big Facebook logo on my on my studio because when Facebook first basically came out and I started putting up these videos and, you know, I didn't know nothing about tagging people and yada, yada, yada and all that other fun stuff. I didn't know nothing about that stuff. And, uh, but it, it built my business. I went from 20 people to 250 people in like a year. But, you know, to answer your question, I mean, nobody... Social media is so fake. It's so fake. You know, um, none of it is, you know, people's lives, you know, they want you to see, you know, that you're happy and you're just, like, for example, my Facebook, people know straight up, if there's something on there that ain't right right now, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. If he wrote something like, hey guys, you know, say a prayer for me or, or whatever, they know, and these days when people are hurting, they're taking selfies and hey, look at me, you know, yeah, I'm living my best life, you know, I got, look at me, you know, my muscles, and in a lot of cases, you know, people are silently dying inside. And, you know, they, I just saw yesterday, it was on CNN, this young, beautiful woman, 24, 25 years old, She's a news can uh, oh, I got newscaster. Help Thank you. And she killed herself. She committed suicide. And you sit there and you look at these pictures. Beautiful woman, successful, an anchor on, you know, on the news. And and I'm I'm looking for like, you know, something, and then it says, you know, committed suicide. And then you look at her social media. Happy, 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 happy. Right up to the time she killed herself. Happy, happy, happy. It's... So it's almost like people either don't feel comfortable to share who they really are and what they're really struggling with, and that fake... Because of what the world is portraying everything to be, right? So we're in a crisis. I think, well, yeah. I mean, I think the question you initially asked me was, what is, like, what can we do? To get self-confidence. To get self-confidence. I think you have to dig within yourself. And you've got to love you. You have to learn. If you don't love you, you have to learn to love you. And love, you, love your flaws. Because that's you. That's what makes you. I can't remember who said it. Somebody said, are you content? So one of the actors said, are you content? Uh, you know, are you content? Are you happy with, it? you know, whatever, something along that lines. And they asked if he, if, you know, if, if he was content with his life. And he had said, I'm a sinner. I'm an old sinner. I've done a lot of bad things, but I've done a lot of really good things. And I've learned to forgive myself and to move on. It was Anthony Hopkins. It was in a motivational thing. And that really resonated with me. Man, we've all done bad, man. We've all, we've all done it. I've stole something here, and I, st I stole, I, I, I was up with you when I told you about my, I took my, I stole my rubber football from DM. I stole all my, my tea, my, my kicking tees. I mean, we've all done things, man. We've all done. There's not one person in this room that hasn't done something bad in their life. If they, they're lying. I'll call you out right now. There's not one person in here that has lived that wholesome life that you haven't done one thing in your, wrong, in your life wrong. We learn. We move on. And those of us who don't learn and continue to make the same mistake, well, we all know what the consequences are. If you're somebody who's going to continue to steal and, you know, well, it's a matter of time. Yeah. Right? It's, it's just what happens. So as we start to wrap up, Dan, yeah. um, your attitude on time, like your mindset on time, it's the one thing that nobody can ever escape. It's the scariest 
most freeing thing. Because I think without us knowing that there's a time stamp on our life being unknowing, but we know we're going to pass someday. Right, right. It keeps us, for some of us, a, a, a guy like you, going. It, it keeps you pursuing more and more. You don't know how much time you're going to have left. If I told you you're going to live for the next thousand years, would you be as urgent and as, you know, go, go, go as you would be realizing you have a little amount of time? Probably not because most people wouldn't. That sense of urgency pushes us. Where can somebody go to find a sense of urgency, even if they don't feel like they, they have it, even though they're going to die the same as we would? You know, I would never wish this upon anybody, and I don't. So let somebody who's been there not once but twice. I'm a veteran of this, okay? So I got this. I've almost died twice. It doesn't matter if somebody promised you a thousand years or they say you have a year or six months. Live every day like it's your last day. I'm going to fight this like nobody's business. I'm down right now, but I'm getting up. I'm laying on my back right now, but I'm looking up. And I always said, when you fall down, always fall down on your back, make sure you're looking up. Because if you fall down, you can sure to hell get up. You need to not take life for granted because we are not guaranteed tomorrow. I am living proof of that. I am I'm 52 years old. The doctors, the day after my stroke, when they did my heart, they said to me, these are their words, not mine, your heart is stronger than somebody who has never had a heart attack at 30 years old. That speaks volumes. But that's years of dedication years of me caring about myself, that's the key to success. If there's anything out of all this today, man, self-love, take care of yourself, believe in yourself, and just live every day like it's your last because you never know. Dan, my last question to yeah. you. So you are sitting in a chair today, yeah. doing an interview on what, something that was supposed to kill you two weeks ago. Yeah. That's 14 days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Registering that in my brain is just remarkable. Thank you. <laughs> is there luck involved in that? In being here? Is luck a thing? No. No. No, there's no luck in that, man. No. You know, um, the only time that I use the word luck, the only time, is when you go to the casino and you pull a, or you, you know, throw the dice, whatever. You win a thousand, you win a hundred million, whatever. That's luck. Getting up out of a bed one day after your stroke. Mentally, you're messed up. Physically, you're messed up. You're wondering, why me? What did I do? Am I that bad of a person that I'm being punished? You fight. You fight your mind, and you fight your physical ability. There was no luck in getting up out of that bed and walking out of that place in four days. It was all heart. It was the love of people on social media, like you. And I love you for that. Thank you. 
Social media can be very good too. We said the bad things. But if you look, my one post the night um, after my uh, stroke, I went live because I wanted to let everybody know. And within... Uh, That's what I saw. That's how I found out. Yeah. In one hour, I had 4,000 views. And I had about 600-something people messaging me. No, oh, buddy. There's no such thing as luck, buddy. There's no, there's no such thing as luck. Like I said, you go to the casino, win a couple grand, you luck. You get the right card. What I went through, there's no luck, man. I'm here because I wanted to be here. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be here. I wanted to be up. I wanted to be walking around. Ain't no luck in that. If that answers, if that answers your question, man. It does. All you need is you need heart and you need courage. Um, we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Dan, thank you so much for... Uh... Hey, buddy. This is all my pleasure, man. I'm honored to be here. And uh, if I could say... Go for it. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I'm very proud of you, buddy, because... Well, I remember the advice a... that you gave me yeah. back when I was in the basement, Yeah. in the soundproofed room. Yeah. And now we're here at the studio. And now we're here at this beautiful... A year later. Beautiful. What's the square footage? 3,000. You got 3,000 square feet, and uh, you got a great crew. You had a phenomenal crew. Thank you. And you got a beautiful place, man, and uh, you're just getting warmed up, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Dan, you're, you're a good friend, and uh, it, it was a pleasure having you on. We're going to push this out immediately, uh, so thank you very much. You're welcome, um, Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to reach Dan, um, sounds like he's planning on uh, doing some more workouts, and I'm sure that they're going to be harder <laughs> than before he had a stroke. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit. <laughs> so where can people find you, reach out, call you? Uh, you know what, man? You just reach me out. Best place is uh, you can email me at Dan. Christina Sky at hotmail.com or uh, 905-371-4213. Beautiful. Yeah. So. Well, Dan, thank you so much, brother. And, uh, uh, thank you, buddy. Hey, you know what, man? It, it's a pleasure. Always, always is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate you listening to this episode, and I hope that you learned a little bit about life, um, you know, things you want to chase, um, attitudes you might want to adjust mindsets you might want to pivot from. So with that being said, thank you. We hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.